Welcome back, construction crew, in OSHA 30 Study Guide, the ultimate source for exam preparation. In this world of transformation, where elements collide and create, safety is not an option, it's a masterpiece. Process safety management. It's the unseen choreographer behind every industrial ballet. A symphony of caution, where every note is a precaution. A tightrope walk where balance is safety. A puzzle where every piece is essential. PSM isn't just about rules. It's a culture where everyone is a conductor, a balancer, a puzzle master. Together, we compose a safety masterpiece. From the introduction video you must have understood that, today we are diving into Module 6, about PSM or Process Safety Management of Highly Hazardous Chemicals. Here is a recap of Module 5. Everyone about it. Like creating safety data sheets, MSDS, labeled containers. Think of these as chemical warning signs. Then, ingestion. Swallowing a hazardous substance, materials because it's strong and fireproof. Range. You suspect they might. All right, let's ensure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so you never miss a safety lesson. Today we explore the PSM standards, critical steps, then the importance of operating procedures and training. Buckle up because this journey is essential for anyone working with hazardous chemicals. Let's get started with Chapter 1 OSHA's PSM standard. Think of PSM as a safety net for industries that handle dangerous chemicals. These include flammable liquids, toxic substances, and reactive materials. Even seemingly harmless chemicals can pose risks if not handled correctly. PSM is a critical component of OSHA's broader mission to ensure safe and healthful working conditions. It's a comprehensive safety management system specifically designed for high-risk industries handling hazardous chemicals. Industries covered by PSM Manufacturing, chemical production, vehicle assembly, metal fabrication. Construction, projects involving hazardous materials, e.g., demolition, asbestos removal. Energy, natural gas processing and distribution, oil refineries. Storage, farm products, chemicals, and other hazardous materials. Utilities, electric and gas services, waste management. Wholesale, distribution of hazardous materials. Explosives, manufacturing and handling of pyrotechnics and explosives. The PSM threshold. OSHA mandates PSM for facilities handling more than 10,000 pounds, for 1,535.9 kilograms, of specific hazardous chemicals, compliance with PSM is essential for avoiding hefty fines and, more importantly, preventing catastrophic accidents. By implementing PSM, companies not only meet OSHA requirements but also significantly reduce the risk of incidents, protect employees, and safeguard the environment. Here are the study question. Good work, now on to Chapter 2, Critical Steps in PSM. Alright team, what's cooking on your job site? Understanding your process. Every job site is a unique recipe. From mixing concrete to hoisting heavy loads, your daily grind is a process, and just like any recipe, it's got its own set of ingredients, your materials, equipment, and the way you work together. Let's make sure we understand this recipe inside and out. The Safety Blueprint, Process Safety Information Think of your process safety information as the blueprints for your job site. It's a detailed guide to the materials you handle, the equipment you use, and potential hazards. It's like knowing your tools before you start building. The Hazard Hunt, Finding Trouble Before It Finds You now, let's play detective. A process hazard analysis is like a safety treasure hunt. We're looking for potential hazards before they turn into real problems. Picture this, you and your team brainstorming about what could go wrong and how to prevent it. That's a process hazard analysis. Now, what to look out for. How risky is your job? 
Some tasks are more dangerous than others. How many of you are involved? More people mean more chances for things to go wrong. How old is the equipment? Older stuff might need extra attention. Has anything gone wrong before? Learn from past mistakes. Here is your PHA toolkit. What if? Let's brainstorm. What if this happens? What if that happens? Checklist, a ready-made list of questions to guide your thinking. Has a, a deeper dive into how things can go wrong. FMEA, breaking down every step to find weak points. Fault tree analysis, working backward from a bad outcome to find the cause. Now, your PHA team needs a mix of skills. Job site experts, people who know the work inside and out. Safety pros, people who know how to identify hazards. Turning findings into action. Prioritize, fix the biggest risks first. Document everything, write down what you find and what you're going to do about it. Set deadlines, get it done. Spread the word, everyone on the job site needs to know the plan. Keep it up. Regular checkups, review your PHA often to make sure it's still relevant. Be ready for inspections, keep your paperwork in order. Here are some study questions. Perfect, moving on to chapter three, the importance of operating procedures. Remember when we talked about finding potential hazards on your job site? Well, operating procedures are the next step. They're your action plan for working safely. Once you've identified the risks using tools like process hazard analysis, you need clear guidelines to follow. Think of operating procedures as your job site manual. They outline the steps for every task, from start to finish. These procedures are essential for protecting you and your coworkers from chemical hazards and equipment-related risks. Key components of your operating procedures. Startup procedures, how to safely begin a task, including equipment checks and chemical preparation. Normal operating procedures, detailed steps for routine tasks, emphasizing safe chemical handling and equipment operation. Emergency procedures, clear guidance for responding to spills, leaks, or equipment failures. Shutdown procedures, steps for safely ending a task, including chemical disposal and equipment cleaning. Restart procedures, guidelines for resuming work after interruptions, focusing on safety checks. Operating limits, safe parameters for equipment and chemical use. Safety precautions, emphasize the use of personal protective equipment, PPE, and emergency response equipment. Now tips to protect yourself and your coworkers. Understand chemical hazards. Know the properties of the chemicals you handle. Use PPE, wear appropriate protective gear, such as gloves, goggles, and respirators. Follow emergency procedures know how to respond to incidents. Maintain equipment, keep tools and machinery in good condition. Communicate with coworkers, share information about potential hazards. By following these guidelines, you can create operating procedures that protect employees, prevent accidents, and ensure a safe work environment. Let's check your knowledge. Great, let's move start the final chapter, initial and refresher training. Training is your secret weapon for a safe workplace. It's not just about knowing the rules, it's about understanding why they're important. New employees need specific training for their roles, while experienced workers benefit from refresher courses to stay sharp. Think of training as an investment in safety. It's like equipping your team with the tools they need to succeed. 
That's a wrap on Module 6. Remember, safety is a journey, not a destination. By understanding and implementing PSM principles, you're taking a giant step towards a safer workplace. Now, test your knowledge with the final quiz, the link is in the description, stay safe. Do you have any questions? Leave them in the comments below and we'll be happy to help. Stay tuned for the next module, where we'll tackle a whole new set of safety challenges. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to OSHA Outreach Courses.